Hey, everybody, we're back with Ambassador John Bolton, author of The Room Where It Happened. Um, now, let's talk about uh, Ukraine impeachment and your decision uh, not to testify, or rather, your, your, your belief that it was not uh, necessary for you to testify. Um, the big question six months ago was, did anyone see Trump explicitly tie military aid to Ukraine uh, to the Biden investigations? Everyone was saying, like, if there was anyone out there, Republican senators, Lindsey Graham and other people saying, gosh, if there was somebody in the room who could tell us that that happened, this would be a different story. How did it feel to know that you were that person while everyone was asking that question? Look, I think, I think the impeachment effort went into a ditch long before that point. I think the way the House Democrats structured it, they were looking for a partisan fight. They pushed Republicans who might have been willing in the tradition of Watergate of Sam Irvin and Howard Baker might have been willing to look at the bigger picture. Uh, they pushed them away. They created a party line vote in the House and they guaranteed a party line vote essentially in the Senate. So this, this was a huge strategic failure uh, by the Democrats. Uh, and, uh, and I think, and I believe then, and I believe now, that whether I had testified in the House or the Senate, because of the nature of the proceedings, it would have been swept aside, it would have been ignored, it would not have made any difference. And what I did have to say would have been buried. But my question was, knowing that that's what people were looking for, like so much ink was spilled over, it, did anyone actually, could anyone tie Trump specifically saying this tit for tat and knowing you were that person, what was that like to sit on that information and not share it? Well, I felt that the best thing to do at that point was to make sure that the real judges of presidential performance, who are after all the American people, should hear it. I thought this impeachment effort was doomed almost from the start. I think it was just based on a a huge miscalculation. Uh, and, and what's the miscalculation? The, the miscalculation that they could uh, take a very narrow subject and ram it through quickly, uh, which turned out to be exactly Donald Trump's strategy. He wanted a very narrow trial in the Senate, rammed mm -hmm. through quickly, and that's what he got. So, so but that, do you believe that that actual narrow subject was an impeachable offense? Because you told USA Today that as a senator, you would have voted to convict. I probably would have, although, again, I still don't think that, uh, I certainly don't believe I know everything that was going on in Ukraine or that, frankly, still may be going on in Ukraine at the behest of the president. Do you if think that if you learned more, it would be great stuff or bad stuff? Like, oh, take a guess. Bad stuff. What, what, what we don't know will hurt us. Okay. So I guess my question is that because it was prosecuted poorly, in your opinion, and too narrowly, isn't that like someone saying, I happen to know that this guy murdered a lot of people, but because they're not prosecuting him as a serial killer, I don't want to testify in this one murder that they found. Now, let, let me be clear about what the problem was. It's, it wasn't simply the scope. It was the way the House Democrats treated House Republicans. I believe that there were some substantial number who would have been open to a fair consideration of a range of issues. That was never part of the Democratic plan. So that many Republicans who were no fans of Donald Trump ended up in the position of defending him. Now, you can, you can argue about whether that was right or wrong, but that's the fact. You know it's the fact. You saw so you it. think that the Republicans would have been open to other charges or other, other investigations, even though everything they did was to stymie the investigations? We have historical evidence about how an impeachment process can work called Watergate where Democrats worked with Republicans and where the key people who eventually forced Nixon out were Republicans. Jim Buckley of New York, elected on the conservative party line, mm -hmm. was the first Republican to call for Richard Nixon to resign. Mm -hmm. That was something, if the Democrats really wanted impeachment and conviction, that's the approach they would have followed. But they sir, I understand your argument, but that's like saying, you've already said that it was a fair case against him and that it is a peachable offense. All you're saying is that today's Republican Party, far from being not being invited into a bipartisan process, are merely so toxic and so partisan that even though they know he is guilty, they will not do what's best for the American people. No, I, I think it was the Democrats who created this scenario. They, they wanted to hurry so that the impeachment process did not affect the Democratic presidential nomination. I agree with you there. I no, agree I, with you. That was a mistake. Okay, but, but, but that is a political consideration. I understand what they were saying.
but they were using a governmental power, probably the House of Representatives' most important governmental power, the power of impeachment, and they torqued it around their own political interests. Doesn't that sound a lot like Donald Trump to you? Uh, but theirs is constitutionally mandated. His is for his own personal benefit. He was There's using a difference. The secure, no, he was using the security assistance and torquing that around to demand that the Ukrainians launch a political investigation into his opponents. To benefit himself. Political, for his political convenience. And what the right. Democrats were doing were worried about their own political convenience. This was a huge lost opportunity, which the Democrats caused it, it, it on their may be, It may be, sir, but I think that's a false equivalency. They are prosecuting him for a crime that you admit is impeachable. He is actually using his political power to benefit himself and his family. Well, uh, to me, it was a huge lost opportunity by the Democrats because they saw the issue much too narrowly and much, in much too partisan a fashion. Um, well, I, I know you've got to go in just a moment. So I, I just got a couple more questions, if you don't mind, sir. Do you have, do you have a sure. minute more? Sure. Okay, great. Um, the, the turning point in Watergate was when the tapes were revealed. Would you agree there? Well, I think that was one of the turning points, but there were several, and it was important. But after the tapes were revealed, that's when the Republican senators marched over to the White House and said, this is over. There was an adequate basis of belief that had been established on a long record compiled over a long period of time. This was not a quick moving process as we saw in the Trump impeachment. I, I understand. I, I grant you that. But um, what I would say to you is that isn't your book the tapes? Well, aren't you the reliable witness? I, I, look, uh, I have put out a book that certainly has a lot of opinions and conclusions in it, but which I wrote mostly to lay out facts. And uh, despite the Trump administration effort to stop the publication of the book, the facts are now out there. And they're out there in what I think is the most important constitutional court of all, the American people. They'll make up their minds in November. Ambassador, we have to take one more break, uh, but when we return, everybody, I'll ask the ambassador what the patriotic response to Donald Trump is.